Let me tell you a tale. This tale is a horrible tale. But it has, well, no ending really. It's a tale that I believe is quite true and it, it entitles this one. This one that came about a thousand years ago. He came but did not want to be known to have come. He came and he came forth and he decided that he did not like the belief being strong in the world. He didn't like the beliefs working together in unity. He didn't like organizations that worked with other beliefs. So pretty soon all the belief organizations were being hunted down that worked with other beliefs. Of course, some belief organizations were too strong. So he added misleads and misrepresentations to the belief section. Uh, you can take a look at your Christianity for a misleading. Um, he came about a thousand years ago. No one knows really what his name was, but, you know, about a thousand years ago, the belief section really, really took a turn for the worse. The worst in the worst possible way. Uh, the beginnings of the hunts for those that believe, uh, witch hunts and the witch trials, uh, uh, massive destruction of religious artifacts and religious works. He came a thousand years ago, and his goal was to destroy the Now, when I speak of the unity of belief, I mean I speak of the teachings that are shared by other beliefs. Where one belief shares with another belief. It's something I'm trying to rectify and uh, fix now through the United Unified Belief. If you see this one, he came and he, he, he started putting in this place great prides in one's belief. Well, what happens when a belief becomes of great pride? Well, it becomes singularity alone. It sits alone. And what happens when a belief sits alone? It gets weak. Because it's not teaching how it works with other beliefs. Now, if you take Christianity or Muslim or Egyptian or Greek or Roman beliefs, you can see that each of these belief sections have been separated out from all the other beliefs especially Christianity, Muslim, and, you know, our more modern belief section, because for some odd reason they believe it only right to be of only one belief. They believe that only one belief can you belong to and only one belief can you believe in. Well, in actuality, all our beliefs teach us to cooperate, teach us compassion for one another, they teach us to see each and, to each and every one as unique yet, you know, working with others or teaches to work with others. And to say that these beliefs are of this singularity is to say that, you know, that they don't work together. Well, it's evident by our actions and our deeds in life that we do work together by the teachings of these beliefs. But the religious section, because of pride or greed or because they wanted more influence or they saw temptation, I believe it's temptation mostly, uh, they wanted more and more and more to follow in just what they taught. And by teaching this way of just by what we, by following just what you taught, by what they taught, they were able to isolate the belief section where no longer are beliefs seen as working together in the world and beliefs, beliefs are seen as working apart. Uh, each belief is seen as being in competition with another belief in a belief war of loss, a loss of belief of the other beliefs uh, for the people or domination or controlling all of and wanting all of the belief, all the all the people to follow in the one belief. Now, what happened is, this one did come about. Remember that one I mentioned before? He came forth and he offered the temptation of great power, great religious and personal power to individuals who would uh, make their beliefs greater and make their beliefs more powerful by isolating their belief from other beliefs. Well, this isn't true, though. Because the beliefs teach us to work together in cooperation, which is what the one, this one that came about a thousand years ago wanted to destroy. 
the cooperation between bodies, the, where mankind and womankind work together, that is taught by the good books and the good teachings of all the different beliefs together. Why did he come forth to take these? I don't know. What was the structure, structure and how did he rise in power? That's another mysterious mystery. Because this one did not want to be remembered. He, his name was uh, not written down. He wasn't really recalled in any fashion. But he did arise, and he did a massive damage to the realm of belief. Now, why would you follow in this way? Because, you know, it might be the way you followed all your life. It might, might be the way that you, 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 you believe that just your belief is the only one of any really material matters. But by believing in that, you take away from the belief that your, 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 your wondrous belief and your fantastic belief in the good books teach us in working together in cooperation. You take from that. What, does, what, what do you gain? Well, that was the temptation. You gain greater influence, greater power, and greater wealth. The belief does. The religious organization does. Why? Because no longer are they going to other belief organizations for aid or for teachings. They're only isolated down to the one, which causes a greater number of people for that belief. A greater number of individuals following in that belief alone. But the thing is, when the teachings of that good book or that good works are revealed, you should find, or I find, when I, whenever I do study religious teachings, that I find that, you know, my religion, the religious teachings teach me to cooperate with others and work with others. But these beliefs of cooperation and working together have been hidden for so many years by this overwhelming idea of just one in existence or one good in existence or one belief in existence being the all-encompassing belief where in actuality belief doesn't encompass just one belief. If you look at the world, there's many individuals in this world that follow a different belief structure than you. Like every individual. Even among the same church, the same religious sect, there is every individual follows that belief to a different uh, what's the word for it? Uh, they follow it to a different end. They follow it to a different meaning they gather from that teaching. But when that teaching is held in such high regard that it's the only teaching that should be followed, what do you lose? Well, you lose track of the teachings that are taught to teach us to work together, to harmonize and find, find uh, fellowship in our fellow man and womankind. Because in all truth, what does your belief teach you? Does it teach you that it's the only belief to be of existence? Or does it teach you that other beliefs exist, but you choose to follow on this one because it teaches you a better way? Which it might teach you a better way, but what do these other beliefs share? That's what has been lost over the centuries since that one did arise. Since that one did come forth. He came forth and he took what from this world? His goal was to take what from this world? The cooperation, the togetherness, the unity, the harmony. The unity. The harmony. Now what is harmony? Harmony isn't, isn't one belief working by itself because, you know, that's only one belief. There can't be harmony if you only have one. It takes two at least. Now, where is harmony taught by your good book with another good book? Have you ever looked at those teachings? Where does your good book teach you to work in harmony? And now, by taking those teachings of harmony, where one works with another, you can apply that same teaching to the good books and the good teachings of other good books. Why isn't it done? And why, 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 why is it that these have been hidden for so many years because of, well, temptation. The temptation of great power. Because when one follows just in one belief, that cardinal or that priest or that 
rabbi or that, you know, that, that teacher has greater influence. Because that no longer are you searching out the answers on your own, but you're looking to the answers just from that one teacher. Which gives uh, that teacher great influence over you. The problem with that is, is that that belief does not just teach you to work with one belief. Because the greatest teachings that I think, and I, this is in my heart, is the teachings that where we are taught to work together. Because those teachings are the teachings that, you know, keep the world going round and round. Because when we don't work together, what, what are we doing? Well, we're either fighting or we're not doing anything. So, what was that one's goal was to cause the world to erupt in what kind of violence against other beliefs, which actually did occur. It did occur a long time ago, but now it's a whole new decade, a whole new millennium. Do we have to continue to fight amongst each other in the belief section? Do we have to hunt down those that believe in something different than ourselves and try and convert them to our belief? But what, what we can do is we can go out there and we can look towards those that are of a different belief and see where their belief works with our own. And when we see where they work with our own, not only do we start to teach these other beliefs how we work with them, but we start to learn more about our own, how we work with others from our own belief teachings. Something that, that one that wanted the destruction of this world a thousand years ago, the realm of belief anyways, and put forth these little niches and these temptations that caused such great strife and such great war and such great loss in the belief section, just think about a thousand years ago. Wasn't that about the time that the great, the great hunts did begin? When books were burned and teachers were crucified and great teachers were lost and wondrous t things were lost because the teacher was tempted by the influence that, you know, they're not right. They, 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 they don't follow in my belief. They, they should be assimilated. They should have to follow in what I teach. Um, because I want to be able to help these people, and they thought, thought that that would be the greater way to help people, or maybe that was a temptation. A greater aid was thought to be if there was only the one teachings, the singularity teachings, that thought they could get, create a greater aid to the world. But that isn't true, because, you see, the aid that we seek in harmony, the teachings of harmony, which is the greatest teachings that any good book can teach you, that any great teacher can teach you, are taught not in a singularity, not in the idea of just one, but in the thought that there's this one that I follow, and then there's this other one that this guy follows, and there's this other one that this person follows, and there's this other one that this gal follows, and there's this other one that this, these people follow. Now, when these all come together, and what they work together on, now what are we teaching there? What, what is taught there when, when we work together? Well, there, there's prosperity. There's peace to loss. Peace to war, in other words. There are wars of loss, but there's also aggression taught. Aggression to be, to be of what you seek and cooperate with others and work together with others. Which is something that this one that rose a thousand years ago did not want to occur any longer. He wanted to see great strife and great war. And he did a heck of a job. He really did a heck of a job on really destroying a lot of the great teachers of the past. Um, but we don't have to continue in these steps. Because this is a bright new day, era. It's a whole new millennium. And I think this millennium should be one where we follow the teachings of our good books as they are taught, not as a singularity, but as one working with others, con together in compassion, and togetherness, which, you know, teaches us to work together, teaches us to love one another, teaches us to, to look past the differences and see what we share, 
which teaches us respect for one another, yet, you know, we don't always share the same beliefs and the same ways as others. So, what will you follow? A belief that only you exist, and that only your belief is the only one in existence and is greater than all others? Or that your belief, though it is great, it's not the greatest of all others, because the greatest of all our greatest beliefs are that which is your belief combined combined with the other beliefs. Because when they're combined, isn't that where we learn to get along? Isn't that where we learn to cooperate? Isn't that what keeps the world going round and round? Isn't that where uh, one from one belief works with another of another belief? Isn't that where freedom of religion and freedom of belief is truly found? Where each is respected for its uniqueness? And you're unique, just as your teachings are unique. Just as you find the meaning that is unique. But what you do with that, what meaning you find in that uniqueness, when you see where that unique meaning gathers with the teachings of others or even of the same teachings, is not that where we learn to cooperate? Where we learn togetherness? So what keeps the world going round and round? What beliefs? Thank you for your time, Christopher David Clayton, of the United Unified Belief. And what is it that got one arm destroyed that rose a thousand years ago? What is it?